I hate to say I told you so, but as I predicted earlier this year, Express LRS Gemini mode is now actively supported by manufacturers. And this is the Radio Master Nomad. It's a 1 watt ELRS dual band Gemini transmitter that's not only beautifully made, it's got a big trick hidden up its dual antennas. Now, if you know about Gemini mode, if not, see my recent video that explains it all, you'll know it's a diversity transmission system that sends parallel duplicate packets and uses frequency hopping to make everything very reliable and doesn't compromise the data frequency because they're basically sending in parallel and not in series. Until now, this has had to work on either 2.4 gig or sub gigahertz. That's the 900 meg band. But this Nomad takes things further and along with this new matching DBR4 dual band receiver introduces crossband. It uses 2.4 gig and 900 megahertz at the same time in Gemini mode. I know that all sounds a bit techno babble, but the reality is using these two very unique products will give you fantastic range, reliability and immunity to RC packet loss for your drones, planes and wings. It's pretty much the ultimate system for long range penetration and in noisy RF race environments. Hello and welcome to the Whirly Bloke channel. This is basically two 1 watt ELRS dual band transmitters in one box and it runs Gemini mode. And that means you can have them both running at 2.4 gigahertz or both at 900 megahertz or in crossband where one is running at 2.4 gig and the other is running at 900 meg. It's all very clever stuff and I think this diagram shows the options quite clearly. Now, of course, you will need a matching crossband receiver to work with this Nomad, and that's where this DBR4 dual band receiver comes in. And I'll talk about this in a minute. I keep saying this has got two transmitters, but in reality, they're transceivers. Dual third generation Semtec LR1121 transceivers, to be exact. So, this will work with all the new Mavlink features in the upcoming ELRS version 3.5, and that includes K-modes. Basically, K-modes are next-gen FSK modulation with built-in packet repair or forward error correction. And just like fast long-range comms or FLC D500, DK500 sends repeat packets to reduce packet loss in noisy environments say like at a busy race meeting. And coupled with Gemini enabled transmitters and receivers, nothing comes close to this level of RC reliability. And when ELRS 3.5 is available, this supports DK500 and K1000 sub gigahertz. That's an incredible 1000 hertz in the 900 meg range. And although I'm not planning to test it, during development, it has been seen to work at up to 20 kilometers. Beat that, DJI. There's all these new packet rates for sub gigahertz and dual band, and I'll leave links in the description so that you can read through the full details at your leisure. And remember, some of these features won't be available unless you install NRS 3.5, which is in RC1 now, so it's all very current and only just round the corner. Now, the case on this seems to be some sort of cast metal. It's got these nice heat sink fins and built-in fan to keep everything nice and cool. There's a couple of buttons at the bottom here and an LED strip. And there's the usual USB-C connector there for flashing and an XT30 so that you can run this on external battery anything between 6 and 16.8 volts that's basically up to 4S it comes with a JR slot and a nano slot adapter so you can plug this into almost any radio 
And the price on this is $49.99 direct from the Radio Master website. You can see here, we just slot this in, you can see it lighting up. Got my super bright box of crush here, let's turn that on. Welcome to HTX. There we go. You can see it's got this LED strip here. Not much else to see on that, but you control everything with the lower script on the radio. Now this is the companion DBR4 receiver. It's a dual band, dual channel Gemini receiver that works seamlessly with the Nomad module. It's got two dual band sections, each capable of simultaneously receiving 2.4 gigahertz and 900 megahertz signals. So the chances of missing any packets is minuscule, even in difficult or noisy environments. The telemetry RF power on here is basically two lots of 100 milliwatt, and it supports all the new Mavlink features of ELRS 3.5. And of course, having all these channels means that you've got four antennas, sort of spider, isn't it? I guess the only problem might be where you're going to mount those, and there's no reason why you couldn't use sort of traditional T or dipole antennas for this. And they're just little UFL connectors on there, so no problem with that. And this supports all the various Gemini modes and frequency options, same as the Nomad, including crossband. And the price on this is $29.99, again, direct from the Radio Master website. Radio Master continued to launch a steady stream of new and very interesting products. Now, I've seen comments in my reviews on products like this box of crush transmitter that it's all just flashy add-ons. I hear things like it's just the same old boxer, but it's lime green or yellow. But I think it's great that they're giving us options. And there's no way that you can level those sorts of comments at this Nomad. It's a very serious piece of kit, cutting edge, and if you're serious about long-range flying, or you're in a noisy radio environment, you should consider this. Gemini, ELRS version 3.5, and the supported forward error correction, as far as I'm concerned, are the future. As soon as ELRS v 3.5 is released, of course. The reliability this provides for RC control and telemetry links is on another level. And it's not just for hobbyists in the RC community, if you need the best reliability and range for commercial, industrial, survey, or dare I say it, military remote control and telemetry, particularly when valuable payloads are involved, this is the system that you should be looking at. And I wouldn't be at all surprised if Radio Master starts incorporating the third generation Semtec LR1121 transceivers into future transmitters not just for hobbyist gear, but possibly for commercial grade applications as well. And as for me, I'm planning to upgrade the current setup on my CineLifter, which is using Diversity TBS Crossfire at the moment. The improved reliability this gives certainly justifies switching things. And I'll keep you posted on how all that goes. Now, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this in the comments, and if you enjoyed the video or found it helpful, do give me a thumbs up, and if you're new here, please subscribe. If you're on Facebook and Instagram, you can follow me there as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.